in the first part of the discussion on stakeholder capitalism, we touched upon the future generations. So I will be the one addressing this enormous issue in more depth. The systemic subservience for the future generations of employees has led to general employee disengagement, which is a source of trouble for many worldwide businesses, with 85% of global employees being actively disengaged at work. Now, as we all know, disengagement equates to approximately 7 trillion in lost productivity and an overall fragmented employee welfare. This issue is especially relevant in the existing work environment, in which managers need to ensure the engagement of Generation Z or Gen Z employees. These employees represent a quarter of the workforce. Gen Z, which includes individuals born after 1996, is the least engaged generational group with their work, faces the highest numbers of work-related mental health struggles, and it is most prone to job switching, with 77% intending to change jobs in the following year. For all interested in employee engagement, it may be helpful at first to understand the typical characteristics of the four generations that comprise today's multi-generational workforce. First, we have boomers born between 1946 and 1964. These workers generally occupy senior positions, exhibit high company loyalty, and a strong work ethic. They believe that hard work leads to success. Now, boomers, they are principally motivated by money and the desire to hold on to their hierarchical positions. Then, we have Gen X, born between 1965 and 1980. They have a strong work ethic, but less company loyalty. They avoid long-term commitment. Gen Y, also known as millennials, born between 1981 and 1996. These employees are not loyal to companies. They view jobs as occupations, not as vocations. And finally, Gen Z, born after 1996. These tech-savvy individuals tend to expect rapid rewards. They resist adaptation to the workplace hierarchies and resent the power differences between themselves and more tenured employees. Now, according to Schwab and Van Ham, all legitimate stakeholders under stakeholder capitalism should receive a seat at the table. Institutional and social actors, however, have failed to provide a unified agenda for the development of the future generations of employees. The predominant literature on stakeholder capitalism, of course, discusses the future of the next generations in a very broad sense. However, existing literature does not sufficiently address the next generations of employees. There is an insignificant amount of research on the dynamics of Gen Z that lead to their lack of preparedness uh, for their organizational roles. So having recognized this research gap and managerial problem, the findings and framework that I will share with you are based on original primary research. The research uncovers the employee behaviors of Gen Z and their managers and uniquely incorporates the lower and higher levels of analysis. The field study method or qualitative phenomenological was combined with the lived experience of Gen Z employees working with their older managers. The non-random research sample consisted of 75 participants. This total included 45 managers belonging to the Boomer, Gen Z, and Gen Y groups. Along with 30 Gen Z employees, interviews were conducted in a total of 42 companies. Findings illustrate that the youngest generational group of employees is not treated as a priority in companies. Companies such as Deloitte and Amazon voiced their doubt pertaining to their ability to effectively meet the needs of young employees yet their managers receive no senior level support. Increased pressures on organizations to respond to different stakeholder groups generated the extensive discourse on stakeholder prioritization. Several stakeholder classifications typologies emerged, as my colleague before me mentioned, legitimacy, salience, relationship level, power, centrality, or morality. 
And under all of them, the future generations of employees should have been prioritized. Considering the premise of stakeholder theory to advance ethical managerial and stakeholder action, it is argued that the next generation of employees represent primary stakeholders that should be prioritized under stakeholder capitalism. And companies, some of them, may be tempted to see these as a problem for, say, their HR departments to address when, in fact, business leaders, executives, business schools, and governments must now provide the larger part of the solution. The societal contract, the primordial one between generations, dictates that each generation must prepare the one that follows, said seminal author Karl Mannheim. In the field of commerce, businesses can fulfill that obligation by better preparing managers and executives to lead the future generations of promising professionals. Five mechanisms can help companies to do so. First, multi-generation diversity training for managers and employees. Managers need to learn how to lead the multi-generational workforce. Employees need to learn how to work with each other. Diversity training should include sections on the different characteristics, needs, and communication styles of the generations. Creating mixed generation teams. Managers should create teams formed of multiple generations and assign roles based on generational capabilities. For instance, in mixed generation teams, boomers are well suited for process oriented assignments and Gen Zers can contribute technological skills. Gen X employees speak the language of both boomers and Gen Z, and they often make ideal project leaders. Onboarding should respond to the unique needs of Gen Z employees. Complex onboarding processes are detrimental to company performance because Gen Z employees have a high turnover rate and very short employee life cycle. Onboarding modifications include rapid integration, gamified onboarding through information systems, and access to on-demand information. Organizational modification for experienced employees should include reframing knowledge sharing versus knowledge acquisition as a benchmark for retention. Collaboration of business schools, businesses, and governments to create their own partnership in communities for the better preparedness of young employees. At the highest level, the development of a common agenda that communicates common needs and values for the next generation of employees would best aid all actors involved in leading change for the future. CSR reports should include multi-generational diversity goals and metrics for both corporations as well as small and medium-sized enterprises. These could include indicators of partnerships with business schools, conferences for managers, or in-company multi-generational diversity training. Reporting may also include success stories on turning intergenerational conflict into collaboration and bring case studies on the performance of mixed generation teams. Yearly progress should of course be measured against previous goals. So overall, the great resignation, Gen Z employee disengagement and high personnel turnover are indicators that traditional organizational practices are not up to the challenges of the day. They are indicative of the mismanagement because of the incorrect assessment of the importance of the future generations of employees. Governments and business schools may be tempted to let companies solve personnel issues on their own, but in fact, all of us are part of the problem and need to be part of the solution to prepare the young generation of employees for effective workplace participation. Thank you.